Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course on medical biomaterials. Today we are going to start on a uh, uh, different material that is polymers. Polymers are most ubiquitous and um, we can have different combinations, blends, different sizes, shapes and so on. So, polymers have become very useful in the area of uh, biomaterials um, next to metals I would say and uh, sometimes maybe they may even replace metals at some points because nowadays polymers of uh, very high strength are being uh, designed. Okay? Okay, so, what are these polymers? These are long chain molecules containing repeat units. Okay? So, these are very long chain. So, the molecular weight um, may vary from maybe about a couple of thousand going right up to 100,000, 200,000. Okay? So, hundreds of kilodaltons. Polyethylenes could be in that range we can have some glucons which are about uh, 2000 Dalton. So, polymers have wide range of uh, molecular weights and um, they have repeating units which is called MERS. Okay? So, that is why you have uh, monomer, um, oligomer and so on. So, single MER is called a monomer. So, there are natural polymers like cellulose, glucon, starches, natural rubber, even DNA would call it a natural polymer. Okay, so, many of these natural polymers are also used in uh, biomaterial applications uh, because uh, they are uh, uh, biocompatible, they will not exhibit uh, any toxicity and in addition synthetic uh, polymers, um, hundreds of synthetic polymers have come already into uh, the use. Um, there is something called a polymerization reaction, okay, so that is the reaction. Uh, which converts these monomers into polymers. So, we can have a single monomer, so we will have a polymer of uh, the same uh, um, monomer or we can have two monomers, so we will have polymer of uh, two of the monomers. Okay? So, we can have uh, dimerization and so on, monomerization and so on actually. Okay? So, um, we can have combinations of uh, uh, more than one monomer to get polymers. Then later on we can blend different polymers, hydrophobic, hydrophilic polymers to get uh, product, products of different properties okay? and uh, that is why polymers have become very, very useful. So, the polymers are classified originally thermoplastics, thermosets and elastomers. Okay? Thermoplastics, so they are held together by relatively weak intermolecular forces okay? and they have little cross link and uh, they are ductile. They soften with heating and then uh, when, we when we cool it again they return back to their original condition. So, that is the advantage we can soften it by heating uh, where, uh, and when you cool it they go become uh, in the old form like your polyethylene, polypropylene, uh, linear low density polyethylene, insulation material all these are called thermoplastic. That means when I heat it thermo means temperature right plastic. So, when I heat it uh, it becomes like a plastic and then when we cool it, um, it sets. Whereas, thermosets, they have large cross-linking, they are very hard and brittle unlike uh, thermoplastics which are ductile, they do not soften while heating. Okay? So, uh, once we set it after that we cannot change their shape. Okay? Unlike the thermoplastic, thermosets we cannot change the uh, shape once they are set like your vulcanized rubber, polyester resin and so on actually. So, they are used in automobile constructions, toys, etc. And of course, there are many applications in uh, biomaterial where you have thermosets where you do not want to soften the material, we want a hard material. Okay? Then you have elast elastomers, these are rubbery polymers, okay? elastomers are like rubber. They are highly flexible, elastic like your silicone. Silicone has got lot of applications historically in the area of uh, biomaterials because they are very rubbery, flexible, silicone tubes, ureteral tubes, um, breast implants and so on. 
um, quite a lot of application. So, polymers are basically divided um, based on whether they are thermoplastic that means uh, they soften um, and again they get hard once it is cooled or thermosets where it does not soften any once it is set it is set and then the elastomers which are rubbery type of ok. Uh, so again uh, polymers can be divided in two forms natural form, natural polymers, synthetic polymers like your polysaccharides, starch, alginate, chitin, chitosan, glucon they are all uh, sugars lot of sugars other natural is protein, collagen, fibrin, silk. So, as you can see these natural polymers are produced either by bacteria, fungus or from plant derived sources ok. So, and animal derived sources. So, we have all these are natural polymers ok. And a lot of natural polymers are also used in biomaterial application. Um, for example, if you look at starch quite a lot of uh, cyclodextrin. Um, they are used in drug delivery system, chitin, chitosan they are used in uh, uh, ligaments ok, polysaccharides are also used in uh, drug delivery system ok, proteins uh, you are used in coating uh, biomaterials to make the material biocompatible, uh, sometimes uh, uh, the um, for uh, tissue engineering the scaffolds are made with the collagen, silk. So, polymers or natural polymers are used widely, but then natural polymers have lot of uh, um, disadvantages also. Although they are biocompatible, uh, they have this biological recognition property that means, uh, uh, when they are implanted inside the body, uh, the host system um, is very comfortable having that. You have good cell addition and differentiation, but they have poor mechanical properties of course. Immunogenicity, they have immunogenic properties because some of them could be bacterial or even animal which could cause certain immune response ok. Um, so, for example, bovine serum albumin for example, or even uh, your uh, um, chitosan for example, or collagen for example, um, because they are animal derived there is always worry that there could be some uh, contamination coming from the animal especially the collagen ok. Uh, they also have limited supply. So, um, we cannot produce in tons and tons because they are uh, if they are animal derived it becomes difficult uh, because the animals have to be sacrificed to get uh, that sort of uh, product. Um, bacterial of course, uh, if you have very good fermentation technology uh, bacterial derived polymers could be made in uh, uh, tons and tons of it. For example, um, linear glucon is made in large quantities using bacteria. Now, if you come to synthetic polymers they are made chemically like uh, your any organic molecule, we can make uh, these synthetic polymers, um, the monomers are made and then the polymerization reaction is carried out uh, to arrive at synthetic polymers like polylactic acid, polylactic glycolic acid, polycaprolactone, polymethyl methacrylate, polyethylene glycol and so on. So, all these are synthetically derived polymers and um, as you can see some of them are hydrophobic, some of them are hydrophilic. Okay, so, we have wide range of hydrophobicity, hydrophilicity, some of them have uh, um, thermosetting properties, some of them are thermoplastic properties, okay. some of them um, prevent uh, bacterial addi addition, some of them do not prevent, some of them are biodegradable okay, like your polylactic acid, uh, some of them are non biodegradable like your polyethylenes. So, we can in the same polymer family we can have um, different properties. Of course, uh, there some of the mechanical properties are not as good as uh, metals, okay. but still they can really augment the metals. Uh, for example, synthetic polymer coating is done um, on a drug eluting stent. Okay. The stent has a synthetic polymer coating, the polymer degrades and elutes out the drug. If you are talking about drug delivery in some orthopedic issues, then we have biodegradable polymers. Okay. Um, we cannot have a biodegradable metal, so we need to have a biodegradable polymer. So, for drug delivery applications, slow release systems, scaffolds uh, which can completely disappear, uh, bioresorbed, then of course, nothing to beat polymers. So, polymers uh, have great uh, future and great application. They have good mechanical properties 
of course, uh, when compared to metallics, they are nowhere. Degradation rate can be modified. We can make it uh, um, say days or we can make it uh, weeks or even years. Okay? Uh, so, that is the beauty of it. Uh, some polymers are hydrophobic. Um, so, the problem is um, bacteria can attach. They lack cell adhesion signals because uh, um, cells uh, can adhere if they, if, uh, they identify the polymer um, as their host unlike the natural ones. Degradation products, for example, if polylactic acid degrades, um, it may give out a little bit of lactic acid which may be a little bit acidic. Okay. So, that problem is there which can lead to inflammation, cell death, tissue necrosis and all that. So, that also can happen because some polymers um, can degrade a little bit and uh, give out some acidic. Uh, for example, if you take polymethyl methacrylate, um, so it is obtained from methyl methacrylic um, acid okay, or methyl methacrylate for example, there could be some little bit of acrylic acid present maybe in PPM or even PPB which uh, is not fully uh, polymerized. So, there could be some little bit of leaching of that. Take polycarbonate which is a very, very strong it is even called engineering plastic, it is as strong as many metals. In fact, uh, shatterproof um, glasses for example, are made uh, with the polycarbonate, um, okay. they are extremely strong, even bulletproof uh, glasses are made with polycarbonate. But the problem is uh, polycarbonate is made up of okay, um, some chemicals. Okay, like um, diphenyl carbonate okay, and uh, bisphenol A and uh, little bit of bisphenol A even small ppm or even less than that um, unreacted is present and if it starts leaching out and there are some worries about uh, the bisphenol A causing endocrine disorders and so on actually. So, that could be one problem with synthetic polymers if there is a very small amount of uh, uh, and reacted monomer percent which could be toxic to the system or if there are any degradation products um, which could be toxic or leaching out uh, leachins which could be toxic then uh, that could be um, a delay problematic uh, when it is used as a biomaterial. So, um, there are a lot of advantages and uh, a few disadvantages which needs to be addressed when you are using synthetic polymers. Okay. So, we have both the natural uh, which are also used in biomaterial applications like your collagen, um, starch, dextrin, polysaccharides, exopolysaccharides and we have the synthetic material which are widely used. Okay. Now, uh, I am going to show you some uh, pictures of uh, where polymers are used. Um, these are courtesy from many um, medical centers, hospitals with which um, I am having collaboration. Uh, for example, this is a poly L lactic acid okay. and um, this is called anterior cruciate ligament screw. This is this. So, this is used especially if there is a ligament tear uh, sports related injury for example. Okay. So, uh, near the human knee, knee actually. So, it runs diagonally in the middle of the knee. So, this is used uh, to repair that. Look at this. When there is a fracture and um, the bones are far apart, so non-union site exposed. So, temporarily they keep a polymethyl methacrylate spacer and this is the titanium plate. You can see this polymethyl methacrylate okay. and once it is healed that polymethyl methacrylate uh, spacer is removed. Antibiotic loaded PMMA bead, um, especially in orthopedic uh, surgery there is a lot of problems about infection. So, they keep these polymethyl methacrylate beads impregnated with say meropinum. It is a very good antibiotic as you can see here. It is kept inside um, until all the infection uh, for a couple of weeks maybe until the infection completely goes and then these beads are removed. Okay? So, because polymethyl methacrylate is uh, not degradable. So, once the drug is eluted, uh, it has to be removed. Okay? So, this is uh, these some of these figures pictures are courtesy from uh, Christian Medical Center 
it's called CMC Velour in near Chennai. Look at this, um, this is called a double J polyurethane urethral stent. This is used um, near the blad bladder and ureter connection, okay. There is an ureter here which connects uh, the bladder, ureter and the urine flows through this, okay. Um, and if there is a blockage and the urine does not flow, they need to place uh, this. This is made up of polyurethane, it is very, very flexible as you can see here, okay. And um, it remains inside the body for a couple of weeks or even uh, going right up to 6 to 8 weeks, okay. So, it faces quite a lot of harsh environment here um, because of the flow of urine, you may have uh, salts, uh, calcium oxalate and magnesium type of salts, you may have uh, E. coli, protease, mirabilis like of like the bacteria. So, salt encrustation and uh, bacterial infection are a very serious problem here. So, these are polylactic glycolic acid urethral stents, polyurethane is not uh, uh, biodegradable. So, uh, these stents have to be removed uh, once the infection um, is completely gone here. Um, so, these are some designs of polylactic glycolic acid urethral stent, okay, which uh, can slowly degrade um, in 4 to 6 weeks and so hopefully um, you do not have to do another surgery to remove these uh, stents, okay. So, these are biodegradable hopefully. Uh, this is courtesy from Sri Ramachandra Medical uh, College Hospital in Chennai. Uh, look at this, these are uh, shunt, BT shunt, it is called, it is used uh, near the heart region. Uh, these are made up of, uh, this is made up of polytetrafluoroethylene, okay. So, if you take uh, the heart here, for example, um, this is the pulmonary artery, this is going to lungs. So, this is the, we will call it the um, bad blood which goes to the lungs and um, it gets ox uh, oxygen, okay, and then uh, they come back to the heart and then later on um, the blood uh, is pumped to the aortic branch going to various parts of the body. This is going down and this is going up uh, to the um, upper side of the body. What happens is um, if there is a leakage inside in the heart, uh, the blood does not go to the lungs to get ox um, oxygen, um, the blood gets short circuited. So, um, the patient do not get oxygen and sometimes uh, if it is a pediatric patient, they um, become slightly blue. This is called a blue baby syndrome and uh, this problem can arise especially in a uh, pediatric. That means, a child could be born with this problem, there could be a small hole um, in the connecting uh, um, chambers, okay. So, the blood instead of going to the um, pulmonary artery to the lungs get short circuited and go to aorta. So, there might not be enough uh, oxygen. So, what they do is they attach this uh, PTFE polytetrafluoroethylene uh, BT shunt they call it. Um, so, between the pulmonary and the subclavian artery, it diverts the blood from the aortic branch to the pulmonary artery allowing the blood to flow to the lungs to receive oxygen, okay. So, um, once this is done, uh, the blood gets enough oxygen and so um, the, the, the pediatric uh, patient also recovers. Otherwise, uh, if there is insufficient oxygen in the blood, um, the, the, the patient looks slightly blue in color because the blood does not have enough oxygen. So, that was also called uh, the blue baby syndrome and um, when they discovered uh, uh, this new um, treatment or uh, operating procedure, they were able to save lot of uh, babies, um, okay, by attaching this polytetrafluoroethylene shunt here, okay. Now, one problem with this is as the baby grows, the rest of the body grows, but uh, this uh, PTFE shunt uh, size remains the same. This is, this could be in millimeter range. So, they may have to conduct another operation um, with to have a bigger diameter shunt. So, that is a big problem um, here. They do this uh, because the babies may be too small to conduct an open heart surgery. 
if uh, the child becomes um, uh, older and can uh, um, is able to sustain an open heart surgery then the doctors open the heart and uh, patch up the hole that is uh, present um, inside the chamber okay so once the hole is patched up then uh, the blood will definitely go into the pulmonary artery to the lungs to get uh, sufficient amount of oxygen so when the operation cannot be conducted because uh, the baby may be too small operation means uh, i am talking about the open heart surgery then they temporarily put this temporarily when i say temporarily it may last for few years until the baby is older stronger for it to undergo an open heart surgery okay so this is made up of uh, ptfe polytetrafluorethrin this is an angiogram you can see that okay in the angiogram okay angiogram is nothing but uh, they pass a dye and they are able to see the flow of the blood uh, because the dye can be viewed from outside okay this is a um, this is a courtesy from a hospital called madras medical mission uh, in chennai okay so uh, as you can see i am showing you a lot of uh, pictures of uh, polymers um, where finding applications in different uh, um, areas of uh, the biomaterial research okay this is a uh, cross linked polyethylene it is used uh, for total knee replacement surgery so we have a cobalt chromium uh, metals okay uh, cobalt chromium molybdenum so we have uh, the rotating ball and socket like and so uh, uh, polyethylene finds uh, application there because uh, they don't want to have a metal on metal that is both ball and socket being metal on metal um, they have one of them as polymer so the attrition rate will be much less whereas uh, uh, metal on metal could lead to a lot of uh, metal debris like uh, if you remember we did a problem uh, in the previous class uh, the amount of uh, cobalt ions that get released per year okay so uh, polymers are used mostly uh, polyethylene uh, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene is used here as you can see in this picture for the knee replacement surgery this is a courtesy from uh, cmc velo okay so a uh, lot of applications polymers have S surgical devices implants i showed you so many examples drug delivery systems okay so you want to uh, slow release uh, antibiotics we can coat surfaces uh, with carriers of immobilized enzymes and cells okay so uh, we can have uh, um, delivery systems we can uh, have uh, immunomodulators and other um, growth factors which needs to be delivered um, very targeted drug delivery to particular cells maybe cancerous cells or tumors then polymers are very important biosensors okay so we can have uh, biosensors uh, made up of polymer bioadhesives okay nowadays there is a lot of uh, uh, interest in uh, uh, can I um, join um, after an operation surfaces of the skin rather than uh, having a um, okay, ocular devices like your eye implant, ocular implant, contact lenses, dental materials, uh, polymethyl metacrylate, acrylic acid, uh, dental cements. So, all these are made up of polymer surface modification okay so we can modify metal surfaces by coating with polymer uh, we can have uh, polymer uh, um, inserts to avoid me um, metal on metal rubbing we can have inserts to prevent uh, um, dissimilar bimetallic uh, uh, current being produced and so on components of diagnostic assays tissue adhesives materials for orthopedic and tissue engineering application i showed you a lot of pictures um, related to orthopedic and uh, tissue ap applications okay so lot of um, applications of polymers in medicine okay you, which cannot be carried out by any other uh, material okay so i'll show you we'll talk about little bit on uh, some of these polymers um, polymethyl methacrylate it's extremely uh, useful it's used in dental ocular applications okay um, hard contact lenses intraocular lenses orthodontic applications good 
light transmittance. So, they are able to transmit light. Okay, so, uh, it is quite tough, stable and um, it is very stable especially in oral environment and uh, they also look almost like the teeth. That is why in dental application we find lot of these uh, polymethyl methacrylate. Polyhema hydroxy ethyl methyl okay, product okay. ethyl methyl is extremely because it is hydroxy um, it is extremely hydrophilic. So, it is used in soft contact lenses as you know contact lenses have to be hydrophilic and they should be able to take in lot of uh, moisture um, that is why especially if the moisture con content of the uh, eyes goes down eyes can become red and irritable that is why um, polyhema is used and especially in soft contact lenses because uh, they are quite flexible and like the hard contact lenses which can be used only for few hours then the eyes become red it has to be removed whereas soft contact lenses can be used for much longer duration okay that is the advantage of polyhema. High density polyethylene um, it is used uh, quite a lot in knee uh, especially in the area of ball and socket there you know. Um, good tough low cost it is used in tubing for drains in catheters, urinary catheters okay different types of tracheal catheters. So, HDPE is used artificial hips HDPE is used. Then comes polyvinyl chloride this is extremely inert material uh, smooth it is hard and brittle it becomes flexible and soft by add adding plasticizers as you know um, especially the insulator on top of electrical cables they always have PVC. It is used in blood transfusion feeding dialysis okay. Now one big problem is um, long duration uh, some of the plasticizers uh, like uh, palates are used uh, to make it flexible they may start leaching out into the body uh, fluid which may have adverse reaction um, with the cells and it may cause toxicity that is one big problem with the PVC for long duration uh, it is not very advisable because the plasticizers that are added uh, could be creating problem. So, it is good for short duration applications like your dialysis, blood transfusion, which may be few hours. PLGA polylactic glycolic acid. So, it contains two different monomers lactic acid, glycolic acid. So, you produce a polymerase polymer with these. So, we can have different combinations lactic to glycolic. So, if I have very large glycolic, I can uh, have a fast biodegradation. If I have more lactic, I can have slow biodegradation. Okay. Um, so, we can have different ratios and get different products. So, these are uh, surgical sutures uh, once upon a time sutures are made up of nylon uh, which are very strong and they were not biodegradable. So, uh, when there was an external wound doctors used to uh, um, bring those skin together and uh, suture with the nylon and once the wound has healed they will pull the nylon out. So, the doctor have to perform one more slight uh, operation, but here the PLGA is um, bio resorbable. So, it will completely uh, dissolve disappear. So, we do not have to go to the uh, doctor again um, PLGA is quite strong and um, tough and it is bio resorbed completely. So, we do not have to go again to remove it polyurethanes extremely flexible um, and inert they are almost like your rubber. So, vascular grafts, heart assist balloon pumps, diaphragms, heart diaphragms, pacemakers. So, everywhere PU is used polyurethane. So, there is a lot of uh, business for polyurethane also. So, some of these polymers I would say polymethyl methacrylate, polyurethanes um, they have good uh, um, applications wide ranging applications in the area of uh, biomaterial. Okay. And, uh, Hema highly extremely hydrophilic and uh, they absorb uh, quite a lot of uh, moisture. Okay, so, they are used uh, in uh, contact lenses or even uh, uh, wound dressings because uh, they can swell and absorb a lot of moisture, especially wounds after burn. Um, Hema is good. If you want a very tough 
um, material like a polyethylene which are used in knee replacement uh, and such type of uh, strong uh, applications. PVC uh, is inert material and um, but uh, the problem is um, you have these plastic plasticizers which may leach out. So, it is good for short duration application. Okay. So, PVC is one meant only for short duration applications whereas, uh, PMMA for example, polyurethane, HDPE they are used for much much longer duration applications also. Okay. So, we will continue more on the polymers in the next class also. Thank you very much.